Hello and welcome all. This is the part 4 of the tricky C sharp questions for the Microsoft.NET developer interview question and answer and this is intended to be a, a bit higher level as we have seen in the past three um, parts for intermediate to senior level positions. So let's start. So first question is, what do you understand by regular expressions in C-sharp? Write a program that searches a string within using regular expressions. Now, regular expression is a template for matching a set of input. It can consist of constructs, characters, literals and operators. Regex is used for string parsing and the following code searches a string cat against the set of inputs from the cat animals array using regex. Okay, So we have got a string array of animals and it has got cat all in lowercase cat dog goat and for each string animal in animals if system dot text dot regular expressions dot regex dot is match animal within that animal um, array cat then console dot write line match found so before going to the next question let's see how it works for a second so let's flip over to the Visual Studio and let's go for um, a regex test okay so you need um, no special using statement you have got the default using statement using system is good enough which brings in the string okay and if you run this application before that let me bring the startup objects as interview code dot regex test interview code is the namespace so regex test let's go back to the regex test class and run this application control f5 to run this application and we have got the match found right now supposing if you write um, any other animal which is outside this animal array say cow let's see what happens it should not you'd expect this to go out of this if loop it doesn't fall into the if loop and it shouldn't write anything right so let's verify let's prove that control F5 to run this application so press any key to continue right now the next question is what is the risk condition in C sharp when two threads access the same resource and try to change it at the same time we have a race condition it is almost impossible to predict which thread succeeds, succeeds in accessing the resource first when two threads try to write a value to the same resource the last value written is saved now think of a race condition using the traditional example let's go for a practical real life example say you and your wife have ATM cards for the same bank account now suppose the account has $150 in it consider what happens when you attempt to withdraw $20 and your wife attempts to withdraw $40 exactly at the same time okay now think about what has to happen the ATM machine must take your input read what is currently in your account and then modify the amount notice that the programming in programming terms an assignment statement is a multi-step process now going further so label both of your transactions t1 and that is your transaction you withdraw $20 and t2 your wife's transaction which who withdraws $40 okay so read account initially the account balance is $150 then um, your wife you know also reading $150 and write the new amount $130 because you withdraw $20 and she withdraws $40 so it for her it, the new amount is one ten dollars okay and then end there is no further transactions now after both transactions are complete using this timeline which is possible if you don't use any sort of locking mechanism the account has hundred ten dollars in it although this is twenty dollar more than it should your transaction is lost forever but you still have the money so this is called the race conditions now going further what you want for the transaction is no matter how you interleave the individual instruction executions the end result will be exactly the same 
as you run them one after the other with no interleaving of the same transaction. So you require everything to be running in series. Huh. So for that, you know, locking mechanism is necessary, but we are not going to take it in this lecture. So a proper locks should avoid the racing conditions, race conditions. All right. The next question is, what is the difference between break and continue statements in C sharp? Okay. So you can jump out of a loop using break statement, whereas using continuous continuous statement, you can jump over one iteration and then resume your loop execution. So that is a subtle difference. Now you have got this code. Let's run this code on Visual Studio. Let's flip over to Visual Studio. And this is the Visual Studio code. So in the static void main, in the main method, driver method, or test method, you, I am writing the first statement as output with break and in the second block of code output with continue. Let's see what is expected and then we'll analyze. Okay, so output with break, the number is 0, the number is 1, 2, 3 and output with continue, the number is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 5. Why is like that? Let's analyze the code for a second. So we have this code. So for a, within a for loop, if i equals equals 4, then break. Then uh, if we recall our statement which says that you can jump out of a loop using break statement. So when it encounters 4, i equals equals 4, it breaks out. So it would have written 0, 1, 2, 3 and then it will break out of the loop. Okay. So, whereas in the continuous statement, when it encounters i equals equals 4, it will jump out of that iteration, it will skip that iteration and continue after the, when i becomes 5, alright. So, that's why in the first uh, code block, the number will be written as 0, 1, 2, 3 and in the second, in it will break for good and with the continuous statement it will write 0, 1, 2, 3 and it will skip the fourth iteration and then the last iteration is 5. Okay. So what is the next question? Can this keyword be used with a static method? Okay. We can't use this in a static method because the keyword this returns a reference to the current instance of the class containing it. And static methods or any static member do not belong to a particular instance. They exist without creating an instance of the class and are called with the name of a class, not by instance. So we can't use this keyword in the body of the static methods, but in the case of extension methods, we can use it as functions parameter. Okay. So we cannot use this in a static method because the keyword this returns a reference to the current instance of the class containing it okay and because a uh, question was can it be used can this keyword be used with a static method and static methods do not belong to a particular instance so this is contradicting the this keywords um, concept okay so next, what are the extension, extension methods? Give an example of an extension method. Extension methods enable you to add methods to existing types without creating a new derived type, recompiling or otherwise modifying the original type. Now extension methods are a special kind of static methods, but they are called as if they were instance methods on the extended type. So let's flip over to Visual Studio and see how the extension methods work. So we have got an extension method over here. It says public static int word count and it takes in this as a parameter to the extension method and it returns the string which is the input argument string dot split str dot split. It will 
split a new um, split and takes it as argument new character array and it will split at empty space or dot or question mark and then return string dot split let us see what the string dot split takes in it's a it takes in a array of character as separator and string split option options okay so it splits the string into substrings based on characters in an array so it returns a array of string you can specify whether sub substrings include a empty array elements right so string split options dot remove empty entries dot length so it will give you the number of character number of words in that um, string array okay so how do I test it so in the test action extension method I will bring in this um, namespace extension method sample so using extension method sample and then I test it in a static void main driver method so string s so this is the test string extension methods are a way to extend an existing class without creating a new derived class and int i equals string dot word count this is the extension method right extension you can see there so the number of words in s is let's see it in action control f5 to run this application again so the number of words in s is 16 so this is precisely the number of words you can count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so let's get back to the theory a little bit now for client code written in C sharp there is no apparent difference between calling an extension method and the methods that are actually defined in a type or a class so extension methods are defined as static methods but are called by using instance method syntax their first parameter specifies which type the method operates on and the parameter is preceded by the this modifier right and extension methods are only in the scope when you explicitly import the namespace so these two things we have already seen in action the this keyword is put as a parameter and they are only in scope when you explicitly import the namespace into your source code with a using directive okay and this was the sample that we have seen so that's it